Hi friends, welcome to classes by Lab Doctor. In today's class, let us see how do we differentiate a hematuria from hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria. So uh, we all know that hematuria is nothing but presence of blood in the urine. So there could be various methods how we evaluate the uh, blood in the urine and the most common used method is the dipstick method. So this dipstick method what is the principle on which it acts? The RBCs contain the hemoglobin and this hemoglobin has this peroxidase activity. So it will act on the substrate which is present on the dipstick and it will give various colors depending upon the oxidation of the benzidine which is present on the dipstick. So yellow being negative and greenish purple being positive. But remember when you get a positive dipstick test it means it could either be hematuria, it can also come positive in hemoglobinuria and it also can come positive in myoglobinuria. So, how do we differentiate it? So, whenever you get a discolored urine or a history of uh, the patient is telling that he is passing, uh, you know, blood in the urine or he is passing a dark colored urine, you should always do a dipstick and also correlate it with a microscopy. So, suppose you did a dipstick and you got blood positive and you examined it under the microscope and you got more than 3 RBCs per hypa field. So, that means the patient is actually having hematuria. Now, hematuria can be because of glomerular causes like glomerulonephritis, etc. Or it could be because of non-glomerular causes, UTI, stones, etc. And suppose you did a dipstick, you got dipstick blood positive and you did a microscopy and in the microscopy you were not able to find any RBCs. That suggests that the patient could be having hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria. In hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria, there will be no RBC seen on the microscope when you examine the urinary sediment. Whereas, in suppose if you have consumed certain beets or certain drugs like rifampicin, etc., the only the color of the urine will be red, but when you see the dipstick, the blood will be negative. The dipstick also will be negative and definitely when you see it under the microscope, there will be no RBC. So, that is pseudohematuria. The hemoglobinuria, when I say hemoglobinuria, that means in the urine there is hemoglobin. So, the RBCs are lysed and the hemoglobin which is inside the RBCs, that is coming in the urine that is called as hemoglobinuria. So, for that the RBCs have to lyse which happens in hemolytic anemia. So, hemolytic anemia can happen in autoimmune hemolytic anemia, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria because of um, falciparum malaria, drug induced hemolytic anemia or you can have prosthetic valves like mechanical stress which is causing hemolytic anemia. All these factors can cause lysis of the RBCs, they can break down the RBCs and the hemoglobin can come in the urine. Then there is second thing called as myoglobinuria. Myoglobinuria. So, this is a kind of protein which is present in the myo that means the muscles. So, whenever there is muscle lysis where that is called as rhabdomyolysis wherein the, the muscles are lysed and this protein is excreted in the urine or there is infection to the muscle there is myositis or inflammation that time also this protein can leak in the urine for example whenever there is a crush injury for example a road traffic accident you have done a vigorous muscular exercise there is a heat stroke there is an electrical shock prolonged seizures polymyositis, viral infection, viral myositis or there could be a drug, certain drugs which can cause this myoglobinuria. So, all this can lead to myoglobinuria. So, this you can see this is a normal urine and this is a hemoglobinuria which is given a reddish tinge to the urine. So, in case of hemoglobinuria, what happens? The red blood cells are broken down. There is hemo, uh, Hb plus haptoglobulin. So, the hemoglobin combines with the haptoglobin which is produced by the liver. So, this complex cannot be excreted to the urine. But then in the bargain, what happens is the haptoglobin is all consumed. So, once it is consumed, the Hb, whichever is excess, it gets leaked to this gomeruli and that comes out as in case of hemoglobinuria. So, in case of hemoglobin, 
hyponatremia you will see that the hepatoglobulin level of the patient will be less so this is the most common cause what we see for hemoglobinuria that is the rupture of the rbc by malaria typhoid etc wherein the rbcs are ruptured because of this malarial parasites so this is a hematuria where you can see that this color is reddish this is more like a cola colored or reddish brown in color hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria so in hematuria what happens see that there is a sediment and the supernatant is clear whereas in case of hemoglobinuria when you uh, spin also the whole the entire plasma will be reddish in color so myoglobinuria i have told you that this is a substance which is present in the uh, muscles and which will Uh, spill into the blood and urine whenever there is a muscle damage or rhabdomyolysis so these are the various colors you can see in case of uh, myoglobinuria so how do we differentiate between hematuria hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria so when you do a reagent strip test suppose you have done a dipstick test you will get positive in hematuria you will get positive in hemoglobinuria and you will also get positive in myoglobinuria so all three will give you a positive dipstick for blood in case of uh, hematuria hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria if you see the urine color that will be like in case of hematuria it will be reddish and cloudy whereas in case of hemoglobinuria that also will be reddish much little bit clearer but uh, in case of myoglobinuria it will be more towards the brownish side the plasma color when you see it it will be normal color what i have shown you when you centrifuge it the plasma color will be normal in case of hematuria whereas in case of hemoglobinuria because the hemoglobin itself is being excreted it is mixed it will be uh, pinkish to reddish whereas in case of myoglobinuria again the plasma color will be normal or it will be clear what about the rbcs rbcs will be present in case of hematuria usually in hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria rbcs will be negative or if at all it is present it will be very very less LDH lactate dehydrogenase what happens to lactate dehydrogenase it is normal in hematuria whereas in case of hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria both it will be raised because LDH is present in the RBC so when the RBCs are lysed the LDH can go when the muscles are lysed the LDH will go up so LD4 and LD5 which are the subtypes of this LDH enzymes they are raised in myoglobinuria whereas LD1 and LD2 are raised in case of hemoglobinuria so these are the uh, subtypes of this ldh total ck creatinine kinase it is high very high in case of myoglobinuria because it is seen in the muscles whereas there might be a slight increase in case of hemoglobinuria whereas in case of hematuria this will be normal so other test which we used to differentiate both of them is the ammonium sulfate test so what happens in this ammonium sulfate test is you take 5 ml of urine and uh, we add 2.8 grams of ammonium sulfate and we uh, allow it to stand for 5 minutes then we centrifuge or filter and we take the supernatant in case of hemoglobinuria the supernatant whatever is there that is negative for blood okay and in case of myoglobinuria the supernatant what whatever is there that will be positive for blood so this is the ammonium sulfate test to differentiate between the hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria so these are a few uh, ways how we can differentiate hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria the urine dipstick test positive just does not mean that the patient is having uh, hematuria so it can also be positive in hemoglobinuria and also myoglobinuria so sometimes it becomes uh, necessary for us to differentiate hemoglobinuria hematuria as well as myoglobinuria so thank you so much for watching the video please like share and subscribe the channel thank you